guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Scruffy's Treasure Hunt. It plays two to four players, takes about 45 to 60 minutes and is for ages six and up. And in the game Scruffy's Treasure Hunt, you're basically playing as a little creature moving around the beach attempting to gather treasure. There's going to be a beach area, there's going to be a water area, and you're basically on your turn going to roll dice, move, and hopefully search for treasure. Certain areas on the board will require a little bit more digging than other areas, and if you're lucky enough you'll find some good treasure. There's different types of treasure in the game, whether it be common, uncommon, rare, and even legendary treasure, and these treasures can be, um, in cooperation with other treasures, work to gather you more victory points throughout the game. Your objective is of course to make the most money by selling this treasure, gaining this treasure in any way you possibly can. Additionally, your characters are going to have unique special abilities, and they'll trigger as soon as you have a certain amount of treasure in the game. As you progress throughout the game, the beach is going to run out of treasure, and when the beach runs out of treasure completely, you're going to end up tallying all of your points based on the money you've acquired, or monies, as well as all the treasure you've acquired, and whoever has the most is the winner. Pretty simple game and concept, let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, how to play the game, and then we'll give you my review for the game, Scruffy's Treasure Hunt, the treasure hunting beach collection game. So here we have the game Scruffy's Treasure Hunt and everything laid out to play up to four players, and it's fairly simple to set up. You're going to be getting different cards in the game based on the different types of treasure, whether you're going to be common, uncommon, rare, and legendary treasures. There's also a shop deck, which is going to come with four, three, two, and one of each of these treasure cards, shuffle them up, and place them here, and then deal out two into the main shop. This over here is the discard pile. There's six different characters in the game, and every single player will choose one of them and place it next to them including a set of these little tokens here, which are dig tokens, which will come with, I think, four or five of them, as well as ten monies, which is the currency of the game. You're also going to be getting these die here. There's the dig die and there are the move die. You're going to be rolling these on your turn. Additionally, there are tiles in the game, and based on how you place them are going to be based on this board here. It'll tell you on the light squares, you'll place the basic squares, and then on the darker ones, we'll have the twos, and then finally on the outer rim is going to be the water squares, which is the three spaces. So more digging in the harder areas, which can give you better treasure. Additionally, each player is going to get one of these little star tokens, which are their characters, and they're all going to start in the same space, and then they're going to move off into the area of the beach to try and gather as much treasure as possible. Go ahead and set up your monies over here, fives, tens, twenty-fives, and fifties, in reach for all players to gather, and of course the rule book for the game. Additionally, there's of course the board and the box in order to play. After everybody's got their digging tokens, their character card, and ten monies, then you're going to simply begin the game of Scruffy's Treasure Hunt. It's fairly simple to set up as you can see, and every time you play these tiles will be placed in different areas, but the same types will be placed in the same areas every single game, but that it's going to give you a different array of different types of tiles on the board. Additionally, the last but not least thing here are these little X spaces, which you're going to gather and place to the side, and whenever a card tells you, you'll be placing them on the board and hopefully gathering those as well to gain more victory points to hopefully win the game of Scruffy's Treasure Hunt. That's pretty much it for this explanation of how to set the game up, and of course what you get in the game, I'll take it just down below here now, and we will go ahead and explain how to take your turn and then how to score at the end of the game. Here is an example of a two-player setup for Scruffy's Treasure Hunt. Each player has their character card, and we're playing with Gramps and with Cirrus, and we're also going to be giving each of the players their colored digging tokens, as well as their 10 monies, with dice available for both players. The treasure deck for the shop is set up and dealt out, as well as each of the decks of treasures is also shuffled and placed into its corresponding place. The tiles are placed out, and the characters are in the starting space of the board, with money in easy reach. To begin the game, we'll start with Cyrus over here, and we're going to go ahead and roll these two die. And when we roll the die, we're then going to check the numbers. And in this case here, the movement die is one and the digging die is one. So we're going to move our character up, down, left to right, one space. And then we're going to dig with as much digging power as we have. And in this case, we only have one. Oops, in this case, it actually be a red character. This character is then going to go ahead and place its digging token onto the space. And if the number of digging tokens equates to the number of digging required in order to flip this tile over, then you'll remove this token off of the board. And you're going to go ahead and flip this tile here and do what it says. And in this case, oh yeah, draw an uncommon treasure card. So we'll take this uncommon treasure card and put it next to this character. Then we're going to make this tile go next to the player as well. 
After that, they've done their movement and digging. It'll go to the next player's turn in clockwise order. If you're playing with more players, it'll simply function the same way. This character is going to roll yet again, a one and a one. Blue will move and then we'll go ahead and place a token and we'll flip this over and success. You'll draw a common treasure token or tile and put it face up. Some special cards like this one here is going to be a treasure map here. And it says place an X anywhere on any open dig site. And the player who digs this up is going to get to draw a treasure card with a rare value and all other players are going to roll this die here, which is the dig die, and gain a treasure as well. So we'll go ahead and take one of these, and we'll place it on an open space like this one here, and then we're going to continue the game with this character getting this little tile here. Next player is going to get a chance to go, and roll, 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 roll. Three and two. Oops, three and two. And so red's going to move three and two. So one and two. And he'll stop there. And he's going to place two dig tiles or tokens, which means he's then going to be able to flip this over. And it's a trap. Uh oh. Sinky sand. You need to roll plus two or two or more on the dig die. Otherwise, you're going to lose a turn. Oh, safe. No problem. This is going to go back. This will be discarded. And he can go ahead and move his last space, but he has no more digs, so he's now done go over to the blue player's turn and it's going to keep going like that and in this case as you can see each character has a level up ability level up abilities will allow you to use their ability provided you have that many treasure during your turn not only are you going to be rolling and moving and digging but you'll have an extra action you can take you can buy from the shop here you can sell to the shop or you can trade with another player but you can only do one of these actions per turn and in this case, he doesn't want to do anything right now. However, he could if he wanted to spend 10 to buy this sand dollar. All right, four and three for blue. One, two, three, four. Three dig. Take this, flip it over. What is it? A trap. Uh-oh, an octopus. Discard a treasure card and lose a turn. So he's going to go ahead and discard this treasure map here. And on his next turn, he cannot take a turn. So he'll leave his guy here. And now Red's going to go. On Red's turn, he's actually going to go ahead and spend this 10 currency or 10 monies to get the sand dollar, which is nice because it will allow him to use his special ability faster. And then he's going to go ahead and roll the die. Additionally, too, whenever you buy something, you're going to go ahead and flip over a new one here. A four and a three dig. One, two, three, four. And then three, flipping this over and draw a common treasure. Flip this over and put out a new one. This will go over here into the stack. This player lost a turn, so now Cyrus is going to go ahead and go again. Four and two. One, two, three. Spin for two. Flip this over. Draw a rare card, and then move one last space. Rare treasure. Nice. A skeleton key. Some special cards will allow you to do stuff like once per game. You can instantly dig up a treasure chest on an X spot, and then you must be on the space to use this. So fairly useful, in fact. So if he ever gets to here, he can simply use this treasure key one time to basically flip this over and do whatever this specific card says. In this case, draw a rare treasure card. Then it'll be back to playing Gramps' turn, and it would keep going like that. And eventually this board is going to remove all of the tiles. All the tiles will be gone because players will have taken all the tiles and hopefully gathered treasure and been able to use their special ability to the point where you're finally going to just simply score. And scoring is fairly simple. You'll score all the money you have, and additionally, you'll score all of the treasure you have, and whoever has the most monies at the end of the game is the winner. All of the cards simply function as I stated, but there are certain cards in the game that will have abilities on them. Some of them are going to be once per turn. It's like uh, sometimes it'll be once per game. Both of these operate in different ways. And others will have collection bonuses, which we'll talk about above, that can score you additional points provided you have all those specific treasures in your uh, in your in play in front of you that you know basically occupy your play area to gain you even more treasure in Scruffy's treasure hunt. <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk about the game above, and I'll tell you what I think about this family game. Caveats for the game. First things first, when you place dig tokens on a beach tile and you do not have enough to instantly flip it, you'll leave your tokens there. If you ever move off of the space that has your tokens on it, those tokens will be removed, so you must make sure that you try and dig up that tile before you leave. Additionally, too, when you have dig tokens on a tile, 
except for the X marks, the spot spaces, nobody can steal that tile from you. That's basically an area that you have claimed. When you flip them over, you're going to be getting treasures. It could be a common, uncommon, rare, or legendary. And of course, the more rare the specific treasure is, the more value it's going to have at the end of the game. Additionally, the more rare cards and or treasures are going to give you some type of ability for the most part, or just a ton of monies. For instance, let's look at a couple cards and talk about them, like Boomerang. Lost and found. Once a turn, you can actually remove a dig token from an opponent's space that is two spaces away from you every turn. So that can be quite detrimental to your opponents as you're moving around the board. Treasure maps. They allow you to place an X on the board, and those X's have to be on a space that has not been uh, that has been flipped over and removed. And players are going to need to put four dig markers on that space. And those are basically competitive areas, places where players can compete against each other to try and get that space. And those spaces will give you special things. Maybe it'll give you 25 money, maybe it will give you a rare or even a legendary treasure. And what's also interesting about those as well is every player will have an opportunity to roll the dig die at the end of somebody gathering an X marks the spot card to also potentially gain some money and or cards as well. A card like a boom, a bomb card. Once per game, you may use this item to instantly dig up a tile worth up to three digs the item can't be an x marks the spot tile or a missing earring some of them like i said have combinations like the missing earring if you have both earrings each of them is worth 30 as opposed to 10 which can in fact make you want to trade from the shop as well as trade with other players to give you potential higher scoring bonuses as well as them then of course you have something like the chocolate bar which is in combination with the s'mores you're going to need the chocolate you're going to need the graham crackers and of course you're going to need the marshmallows if you can get all those you'll score 30 monies for each of them as well. Then there's legendaries. Legendaries are going to have active and passive abilities as well. Some legendaries will let you remove a player from the game for one turn or make them lose a turn. Others will basically let you double your movement speed for the rest of the game. And then some of them are just worth quite a lot of money, like this pirate coat. It's worth 50 monies once worn by one of the kings of the sea. So all of the treasures do something different. They have combinations that work with each other. They have special active or passive abilities, but they're all very simple and very easy to understand. Buying some from the shop means that you're going to replace the card from the shop up until the point there's no more cards left in the shop. That's all that's going to be needed. And most likely in the game, you're not going to run through the shop anyway. And like I said before, once the entire beach is cleared of all the tiles, including the blue tiles that are part of the beach, then that's going to signal the end of the game and you're going to score points, points for the game. Overall, this game is a kid's game. It is meant to be played with families. It can be played with six and up, no problem. And I would suggest if you have kids, this would be the type of game I would suggest you to take a look at. Now, it is not the most complex, most strategic style game, and it does involve quite a bit of luck. You're going to be rolling die and hoping you get the highest numbers possible. You're going to be moving around, trying to place your tokens on spaces to gather the best treasure. Certain spaces may cost quite a lot of dig and might give you nothing or even make you lose a turn, but for the most part, it's going to be more likely that you're going to get something good. And then other spaces like the one space are going to potentially give you a lot of common treasures and or possibly even a legendary treasure if you get lucky enough so it's built into that whole luck system of moving the die rolling rolling moving and hopefully gathering the best you possibly can additionally you can dig up more than one treasure a, a turn by moving spending one moving spending two moving spending one as many tiles you possibly can dig up the better for you strategically this game works as well because you're trying to gather a certain number of treasure which will activate these character abilities for instance cyrus over here will let you pick a number and if you roll that number you can move to any space on the board once you have five treasures in front of you so that's going to also make you want to trade with players as well as buy from the shop and then gramps over here once a turn if gramps would dig for treasure he only needs he can dig one more for free which is pretty powerful as well but you need that treasure in order to get it and that means it's going to progress you have to progress the game a little bit before you can instantly start using these really powerful abilities. Some of the abilities, in my opinion, are a little better than others, but that is basically going to be depending on your play style. Do you want to be buying from the shop constantly, getting a discount of sorts? Do you want to be digging more, or do you want to be able to move around more? And being able to choose the character for you is going to be a lot more fun because you can get to choose your play style. This game will play really well with children. I think this is a game that I would specifically be saying okay i've got two or three kids here and myself i can teach them this game i can set it all up for them and then they can go around and do all kinds of crazy shenanigans uh so anybody that likes that type of game or has that type of family that you know is interested in game night this is gonna be one of those things where it's like you're, you're you've taught them candy the the candy land game you've taught them all the basic ones trouble them and whatnot and we want something just a little bit more because this one comes with set collection comes with active and passive abilities all the basic mechanics in the new modern style board games this one has 
quite a lot of them, and will facilitate kids to learn these type of mechanics, which will necessarily let them get into more thicker style games. This one still has that really high chance and really high uh, probability of whether you're going to get something good or not, and this whole like, oh, did I get something good or something bad? I don't know. Uh, the artwork is obviously for kids. You can look at it and decide for yourself. In my opinion, it's just cute. It reminds me of Sunday morning type cartoon style artwork, and overall the game is very quick. It's very simple to play, and for the most part, when you're playing with strategy style people, they're probably not going to want to trade with you as much, but when it comes to kids, kids are going to definitely want to trade to get their step bonuses and whatnot, so I can easily see that happening. If you've got kids, and you've got some of uh, the old classic games that they've been learning to play, and you want them to get into something a little bit more, a little more interesting with a couple more unique mechanics, this would be something definitely I would suggest. My negatives for the game would probably be the fact that you can lose turns, and of course that if you're not really interested in the luck-minded style games where you're rolling dice and just hoping to get the good stuff, and even when you do get a good roll, it's possible that you actually get nothing, that may or may not deter you from wanting to pick up this game. But overall, it's a fun little family game, and I suggest you take a look at it down below. It's on Kickstarter right now if you want to go ahead and pick it up. Scruffy's Treasure Hunt, a cute little kid game that had quite a bit more bite to it than I thought it would when I first uh, went through the rules. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. And don't forget to hit that notification bell button. It does help us out. You get to see more games just like this one on Kickstarter, as well as games that are being released constantly throughout the United States and, in fact, a lot of places around the world. Also, check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. There's a blog post, giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more. We do give away a lot of games, and we're right now giving away the game Return to the Dark Tower, a classic game. That's uh, a $125 promotional thing we're doing right now. Go ahead and check it out. It's, it's a really cool looking game. As well as checking out Scruffy's Treasure Hunt. You can go ahead and take a look down below. It's in the link in the description on Kickstarter. This little family friendly game that has, like I said, a, a bit more bite than I originally thought. It's got a couple unique, a couple things I didn't expect to see in a kid's style game. Like, like I said, this plays six, six and up, and it definitely easily will play that. One thing I would say was maybe the setup, right? It's going to be something that you want to, as an adult, probably to explain the first time through, but afterwards your kids are going to want to jump in on this one. It's a game I can easily see myself playing as a kid, especially with the game options I had back then. This would be a, a lot, this would have been a lot more, a lot more fun. Also guys, thank you for watching. Go ahead and check out my friends. I think boardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and go ahead and check out uh, Before You Play and Show Me How to Win. Some great channels out there. That's all I got for you this time, and as always, I look forward to digging around the beach, looking for buried treasure, and hopefully finding it, and I also hope that it's not something like a bottle cap or a flip-flop or a balloon. I, I, I'd much prefer something like a treasure map or uh, a pirate jacket. Those, those sound a lot better. Yeah. Scruffy's Treasure Hunt. Arr!